Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our uh, regular uh, monthly meeting of the Board of Adjustment. This board was created by the city charter to hear applications for variances from the zoning ordinance requirements and to hear and render decisions on interpretations of the requirements of the zoning ordinance. The board consists of five voting members. It requires four affirmative votes for approval of any variance or interpretation. All cases on the agenda will be heard in the order listed. The order of proceeding for each case shall be as follows. Applicant shall present his case. Persons in favor of the variance shall present their evidence. Persons opposed to the variance shall present their evidence. The applicant shall be given a rebuttal period and the public hearing will be closed and no further testimony will be accepted. The normal procedures of the board will discuss and take action on the application. All meetings of the board are open to the public. Anyone who, who in the audience who thinks for any reason that for any reason they will speak before the board tonight, please stand and take the oath. Okay. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth in all matters pertaining to the cases before the Board of Adjustment? Please say I do. I do. Thank you. Please be seated. Now I'm going to do the roll call. And since we just have four here, uh, we might have Roy might show up later, but we'll work, cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay. Gene Ogle. Here. Jack Lehman. Here. Dennis Hart. Here. And Robert Jones, that's me here. So we've got. All right. Uh, the, the only case on tonight, on the only that's on tonight is a Douglas Deltoff. Uh, it's case number 18 999 12, 1400 South Franklin Drive. A variance request to the setback requirements for the property at 1400 South Franklin Drive. Uh, we'll do the, the video first. Uh, Brian? We may have to look at the video um, out of order a little later. Okay. Uh, because this PC is taking a few minutes to turn Oh, on. it's taking it's, to download? Yeah, it went down and it's loading updates okay so i'm just gonna try to create a um uh, that picture, we can read your mind, your mind read your mind is that what you're saying yeah all right um so real so quick, i guess we'll wait on that and the person real, that, real quickly i'll do a description though okay so so do we do you want to uh, give us the description now yeah. and then and then yeah. we'll have the the uh it looks then, like we have one applicant then, then here during tonight. your discussion okay when it Okay. pops up we'll run okay. all right sounds good we'll give you the pictures all right you know what i think it just popped up did it all right let's give it a second well, i'll just start talking anyway and then i'll run it <laughs> <laughs> okay the applicant has um uh, douglas de hoff has constructed a carport without a permit above the existing driveway for a property located at the southeast corner of Franklin Drive and East uh, Jewel Court. Uh, the mm -hmm. carport penetrates the rear exterior yard and goes somewhat into the backyard. Uh, of course, section uh, 14400 01 C 3 does not permit accessory structures to locate closer to the street than the principal building. Uh, the applicant has set the carport just 11 feet off the pavement of East Jewel Court. However, the distance from the pavement is actually an encroachment of about two and a half to three feet into the right of way. The applicant could place the carport in line with the side of the house. However, this would involve extending the driveway into the backyard. Displacing the existing uh, plantings and removal of the de decorative uh, brick walkways and patio. But if a variance for the street side yard setback is granted, it still would need to be at least 14 feet back from the street. So okay. even if he got the variance for being closer, it's still too close because it's in our city right away. And that's why the pictures are important. Uh, lastly, unless the driveway is moved further east, a variance is required for the carport to encroach within two and a half feet of the rear lot line, which is the west lot line abutting that vacant lot to the west. 
So in short, a variance is needed to permit the carport to encroach two and a half feet into the five foot rear setback. Okay. And then more importantly, the, uh, the, the carport, if it's um, constructed at the right of way line like the applicant would like, um, would still need to be set back um, whether or not the variance is granted. Um, staff's opinion is the carport could be easily accommodated behind the building line, okay. even with the building. Um, n note that there are two other violation issues that have to do with the fence and have to do with a small shed that are not subject of this particular Board of Adjustment case and will be subject uh, to a Board of Adjustment case a month from now. So you'll, you'll, oh, they're hear, gonna this, have you'll hear the same about the same property again oh, okay. in so another, gonna, gonna in another month. Okay. okay. And so basically, these two issues that I've talked about um, these two variances, the rear setback and the street side setback, the interior, meaning the rear, the west one, uh, meets five of the six har um, hardships. Okay. But the one that has to do with distance from the street and encroaching in the right of way, currently encroaching in the right of way, um, um, only appears to, in the opinion of staff, to meet one okay. of those hardship. Um, uh, facts okay and did did we get any calls on this uh, no I didn't the only person I actually talked to was actually someone in the field that actually walked up to me okay and um, I believe she lives across the street to the north okay um, and we talked about this issue all right and um, I I do not see this on the desktop anywhere. So you've, you, you did get the, mod, I believe in your packet, the modified drawing that shows where I added the property line, the dashed line to his drawing. Is so that you what know you where did? that is? Yeah. The, the drawing here? Is that the one you're talking about? Okay, that's, his, that's, that's one that you prepared? No, that, or just that, added that to drawing, it. he prepared that drawing. I added the dash line okay. because the, the real property line, right away lines, were missing from that drawing and were important to know so you can make these decisions. Okay. Um, I, the picture would have shown that there's, a, there's poles and utility boxes um, it, it, in actually behind that fence line. Um, I actually went over this with uh, Scott Green with Public Works. So we, we've established that that fence is in fact in the right of way as well as the, the carport. It's partially in the right of way. So at least the, part both of the it. carport and the, f the fence are partially in the right of way. And partially in the right of way. I think, and my drawing indicates that. So. Okay. Well, do we like we can go ahead and have uh, the applicant come before the and you can speak there at the uh, podium. Give us your name and address and uh, kind of what you have in mind to do there. Uh, my name is Douglas DeHoff. I live at 1400 South Franklin Drive in Independence, Missouri, 64052. Um, one thing about the carport, uh, we had a pre-existing four-foot fence that was already there that we replaced. Um, the carport and the fence were both in the exact same location that that fence was, so I'm confused as to how that fence was allowed to exist if it was indeed in the right of way and we just replaced it. Um, the carport is sitting over the drive where it is because we discovered that there is an electrical conduit running under the yard. Um, we found an unknown electrical box two days ago resting underneath a bird bath that we didn't know about. We actually moved the bird bath and found an electrical outlet sticking out of the yard with bricks surrounding it. That we weren't even aware of. So with the, the electrical line we thought went to the pole and D goes to the house. Um, the brick in front of the driveway, their driveway is very uneven. Um, we had, the previous occupants had some 
severe growth of shrub vines that have penetrated the yard throughout. Um, it's very thick, very difficult to remove. Um, the shrubs that are in front of the driveway are also very difficult to remove. Um, and like I said, the fence that we put in was in the exact same location as the previous existing fence that was sitting in that spot. Okay. Did you get a survey when you did all this work? A boundary survey, or what we call a lot survey by a registered surveyor, to, so you knew where your corners were? We did not. You did not. Um, with the fence, pre existing fence sitting there, we didn't worry about it, thinking, okay, this fence obviously was already here. Um, they wouldn't have installed it if it was, you know, out of the way, and it wouldn't have been allowed to exist if it was out of the way. Okay. Well, um, did you have any other? You were just, you're trying to put in a carport now. Is that one that's frame or is that just a? It's, it's frame, it's completely open. It's essentially a roof with legs that's metal. It's metal legs and metal type roof? Yes, it's all okay. metal. Uh, my point is this, um, we had a, oh, two months ago, wasn't it, folks here with uh, our, our board out at Sterling Avenue and, and Truman Road and what we had to do was because there was a the the road was there but they didn't know exactly where the right-of-way where the property line and right-of-way were on the interior lot and then also on Sterling Avenue so they had to get a survey and I don't know how we're going to do this without a survey because we don't even know where the line is and I know that's going to cost you money but we can't have a if the carport's over the over the right-of-way line you can't have you can't do that you can't encroach I mean, you may not, I'm not saying you knew that, but I'm saying that you can't do that because it's, your, over, your property line is your property line. The right-of-way, or they call it the easement, is the city has the right to do work on both sides of that pavement for utility purposes, so forth and so on, where you have sewers, storm sewers, uh, say you might have some power lines, but we can't tell where the, unless you get it surveyed, now, I don't know, I'll talk to some of the other guys here but uh, on the board, but that's my concern because uh, when it's that close and then it goes over the property line, then that's, that's pretty much black and white. It's just, you can't have something over the property line. Now, it's not a permanent structure, but it's still over the line. I don't know, do, do I make sense? Um, do you all have any questions or, uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, the applicant, uh, Dehoff, is that how it's pronounced? Yes. Um, and I'll talk to Brian, aren't we going to have to have some more information on where the lines are exactly where they are in relation to the, to the, uh, pavement of the road? Because we don't really know. I mean, we have this drawing here, but we aren't sure. Are we? Well, first of all, tonight's decision doesn't have to do with the fence. Um, but by next month, would we need to have that nailed down a little bit more. The, um, the um, carport, I mean, it, I mean, if, if, if you just, if you weren't going to, decide in favor it would be relatively easy to figure out where you're supposed to put it because it should be parallel with the, the house building line if you're going to um, oh in other words move it back if you're going to let it if you're going to let him or if you're going to let him you know do it there but you know set back you know four or five feet it's probably not an issue either but if you're going to let him go right up against that right away line yeah. Unless you have a survey, you you're not going to know exactly where that right away that's, line that's is. That's true. So it's going to take a. You're, I, I'm just trying to point out to you that you have to get a survey before we can render a decision. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know how you. How do you all feel? We had to do that last time what, the on Sterling Road. Avenue and and Truman Road. So I don't see how we can. And to be honest with you, to have a structure over a, a property line, that's. I don't know, that's just something I, I, I'd have trouble approving. And, and again, if I could remind you, 
he, he actually has another application next month for this same property. So, I mean, he's coming back anyway. Oh, that's okay. On, that's on the fence, you're saying? on the fence and on that little shed. Okay, the shed that's right there close to the property line in the back. Yeah. Could, yes. could we get a survey by then? Have you have you ordered a survey or have you talked to anybody? I wasn't aware I would need one, but I can definitely You're going to have to have a survey by a, by a registered land surveyor. Now you have to look in the phone book and find so maybe I, I'm not trying to tell you yeah. what to do, but we can't we can't make a decision without the survey because we have to know where these where the, where the carport is, where the shed is, where the house is, and so forth and so on, relative to the interior and front property lines, because there's just no other way we can know. I mean, if there wasn't a problem, I mean, you had plenty of room. I didn't realize you've got a narrow lot there, and it's 50 by 125 feet, so you're kind of limited there. But we're not trying to be... I don't like to use the word contrary here. We're we're trying to work with you, but we just I can't. Yeah, I don't see you as the enemy, so it's okay. It's, I, I, mean, I understand. I, I mean, we we're trying to, but the city has certain rules and regulations they have, and I'm not sure I've ever had it on the board where we've had a building over the property line. Now maybe too close to the property line, but but not over it. I don't recollect that. But uh, Brian, can we just um, do a move this to the next meeting or whenever he Mr. Dehoff has got the information he needs and he can give us a survey and then if they if he can get it next month if not maybe the following month I don't know I mean I'm just I'll try to get it as soon as I can I mean I'm not going to dilly dally on this but I just don't know I uh, but you do have to it has to be a registered surveyor not somebody that says they're a surveyor when they're not by the state of Missouri I'm and they'll give you a, what they call a certificate of survey drawing that certifies to it. Yes. So, is that does that sound okay to you? I mean, that I don't sounds, know. Yes. We're we'll we're that. trying to work with you, but we just. So can we just move this to the next, uh, which will be for well, I don't I don't even know my calendar in front of me. When's the next date? It would be. Let's see. Yep. Well, so we don't waste the young gentleman's time. Yeah. We've got to get the uh, next meeting. It's going to have to be after the survey. I'd be willing to go out and look at the lot. I'm sure any of us would, but if we don't know where at, where it is, I understand. Our hands are tied. So. I understand. And they'll set monuments, what they call semi-permanent monuments, or iron pins, half inch in diameter. And usually they'll, they have to put a cap over them, and, uh, and they'll put a stake by it. But your actual corner will be that iron rod. I mean, if it, if it's not done by that next meeting, you know, we'll just have to we, we can verbally. You know, there's going to be other items on the agenda, so we can we can have a written request by him that I read that it be continued another month. So okay, that wouldn't be a problem. Okay, because because I'm just saying, in four weeks or so, you may not if they're busy surveyors, then you may not be able to get it that that time period. But maybe you will. I don't know. It's possible. Apparently, erase my calculator. Okay, my so um, so what do we do? Do we just um, Take a take a uh, vote on. I mean, motion, motion to motion. continue this. Um, Here, here's a calendar. Case number eighteen nine 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 dash twelve for Douglas D. Hoff. Be moved to the the next meeting where there is a survey. Is that the way to put it? After because there may not be the next next meeting. Well, well, there well there will be. A, what I'm saying is there will be a next. Oh, meeting, there'll be a next. And meeting. we'll have a. Gen agenda items I, okay but if he's not ready that we could just continue it, it was, his case okay we'll to, continue to the i got you following me because that's what so. we did last month we were on the agenda and we had to continue to tonight the third thursday, September is when? The third thursday of september is the 20th 20th okay so september 20th on thursday okay i make a motion that we continue this to the next meeting when the survey's done okay and do i have a do i have a second okay and can we we'll just go ahead and vote um jack layman yes gene ogle yes dennis hart yes and robert jones that's me yes so we continue it to the september the 30th and we We'll decide then if we have to continue it again if it's not ready. 
I understand. We, we want to just wait until you have everything, but it may be, you maybe have it ready for us. Yeah, I hope so. So I appreciate you coming out. I really do. Uh, we'll work with you, but we have to, we just have to do this. Otherwise, yeah, we can't. I understand. And the carport is just anchored into the ground. It can be. You can move up. it without. It's somebody not, can. Not me. But I mean. Somebody, somebody can. can. You're not, but you'll have somebody that, I use yeah. the word, knows what they're, I don't yeah. mean knows what they're doing, but they'll do it. It'll be yeah. easier for you. Yeah. So anyway, I appreciate you coming out. Um, Thank you. Mr. DeHoff, and it will hope, hopefully next month it'll, you'll have your survey if we'll just cross that bridge and we come okay. to it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for coming out. Nice Good to night. meet you, Doug. Nice to meet you, Doug. All right, so um, I guess we've got to, um, well, I don't think we have any. Let's see. We've got the minutes from the 20. Do what? Can we close the meeting? Do we have to go ahead and approve the minutes, don't we? Sure. Yes. That's what I, yes, approve the minutes. Oh, okay. The, I guess he's already left, but the, the public hearing is, is the, hereby we closed. We voted on to continue. We voted. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, maybe we, but anyway, it has been, the meeting has been, public hearing has been closed, correct? Thank you. Thank you, Jack. All right. So we'll just do a voice on the approval of the minutes for June the 21st and 28th of, of uh, this last month. And, uh, well, no, that'd just be for the 19th. What am I doing here? Okay, the minutes approved for the 19th of July. Um, those in favor of, uh, by voice, and uh, approving those minutes from July the 19th say yay. Yay. Yeah. Yay, and those that say nay, the yeas have it, so it's been, they've been approved vo um, by voice. I was having trouble trying to understand what he was asking, actually asking for. Yeah, I, I, we can't approve anything on somebody else's property. <laughs> no. you know? And even if it's you a city right away, you can't do that. Yeah, city right away. It's yeah. there. It's it's there. Wait, you, you all need to adjourn the meeting before yeah, you discuss. Oh, we, I guess are we we're adjourned. We're the meet. Oh, we, I think maybe somebody better give me some. Uh, this meeting has been adjourned. Thank you, folks. About six fifty-two or something. In this case, I need to go by and look at the place too. Yeah, I'm going to go by there too. Take some pictures. I'll try to take some pictures of it. And, and so forth. That's why I said.